Given I'm your moon food expert, I wanted to share my thoughts on Ozempic, which is getting a lot of buzz. And Ozempic is not just for weight loss. It turns out that it has some positive and not so positive impacts on mental health. I was very recently on a wonderful panel at the Harvard School of Public Health with the amazing top and leading experts in obesity medicine in the country. And at this discussion, I myself learned so much about Ozempic and the impact on the community as well as individual patients. So let's dive into it. Semaglutide is generating a lot of discussion around its safety profile and long-term use, particularly in individuals with serious mental illness. Among the concerns raised are preliminary reports of adverse effects such as suicide risk and gastroparesis, as well as the challenges around the accessibility and availability of the drug for long-term treatment. The evidence surrounding the suicide risk associated with semaglutide is still emerging and somewhat mixed. While there have been consumer reports, especially in Europe, that are currently under investigation, a study published in Nature Medicine reported something slightly different. In this cohort of over 240,000 patients with overweight or obesity and more than 1.5 million patients with type 2 diabetes, those prescribed semaglutide or other non-GLP-1 receptor agonist medications were found to have a lower risk of suicidal ideation compared to those not on the drug. So, while the data does not suggest a definitive link to increased suicide risk, it remains something to be monitored. On the other hand, the concern over gastroparesis is more firmly established. A recent analysis found a higher risk of pancreatitis, gastroparesis, and bowel obstruction in patients using these medications, including semaglutide, compared to those using the combination medication bupropion, naltrexone for obesity. This effect on gastric motility is significant enough that anesthesia guidelines for procedures requiring an empty stomach such as ECT or electroconvulsive therapy, have been updated to accommodate patients on semaglutide. Additionally, careful consideration is needed when semaglutide is co-prescribed with medications like clozapine, which can also cause constipation. Lastly, the issues of accessibility and long-term use remain unsolved. Semaglutide is expensive, which makes it less accessible for many patients, while newer agents like tazepatide, as well as retrotrutide and others, including glucagon, may improve accessibility in the future. The reality is that semaglutide and similar medications will likely need to be taken indefinitely for individuals with serious mental illness who are prone to weight gain from antipsychotic medications. Unfortunately, evidence shows that weight regain occurs once semaglutide treatment is discontinued. So I'm going to challenge you, given that I'm your mood food expert and doctor, uh, to say that you know you may need to take semaglutide or one of the other agents because it's prescribed by your doctor and you need it for medical reasons. I've shared with you some of the concerning side effects that are developing, but other things I want to tell you about are that there are certain foods that you can eat that will naturally stimulate the production of the hormone that is actually what semaglutide slash ozempic is fashioned on or what it is designed to emulate in the body. So very simply, avocado, fiber-rich foods, things like eggs, and others, nuts, seeds, uh, really foods that are rich in fiber, help the gut microbiome produce short-chain fatty acids, and those short-chain fatty acids actually encourage the production of GLP-1 in your gut. So in other words, there are foods that will help to encourage the production of that hormone instead of taking the external medication. Think about foods you can add which are more satiating, will help you keep your weight on an even keel, help you not gain weight for the odd time when it might be your birthday and you have a piece of birthday cake. But for the rest of the time, if we are really trying a healthier norm, a healthier diet, that is going to help our brain health in the longer term. So save that thought until our next video. If you found this video insightful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for spending this time with me today. Remember, you have the power to support your mood and mental well-being, starting with what's on your plate. Until next time, take care and be kind to your mind. And don't forget, eat good food for a good mood. See you in our next video.